Clive, my boy. What a pleasure it is to see you. Hippocrates. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. Then you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. <sighs> You've been talking to Vivian. Right as always. But she didn't seem keen to tell me very much. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. And yet I gather it did naught to dissuade her. Clive, if the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? Coveters of Secrets. A clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. One such text being the tome Vivian seeks. Chronicling as it does, the true history of the enslavement of bearers. A tale which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known. Or, so rumor has it, I've never actually read the thing, or even set eyes on it for that matter. How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized, be it books, inventions, or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Which would explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest or ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. Then my hunt was doomed from the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I'd pluck it from thin air? Not from thin air, no. From ash. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm, but rather less so across the strait. I have a friend. Well, I had a friend in the village of Garnick, a collector of rare tomes upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark. And no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit.
This might take a while. The village looks abandoned. Now, which house would a bookworm live in? <laughs> this is a Royal Army logbook. Take this from the local barracks. <laughs> His interests were certainly varied. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. so soon stranger we've been watching you From subtle I know who you are then we need not waste time on introductions hand me the book with your care do you mean to burn it or bury it that is not my decision to make but by one means or another its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Let's see, shall we? Okay. 
Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull, so let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book, for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Wait! Damn it. Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. There's something about it. I feel like it's... Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. Clive, even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something, that the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable, that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. 
So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. And now more I help the garrison today. Those things didn't fight like men.
This might take a while. Trouble with your gear, or what do you want? It'd last you a good while. Anything else? Say what you will. Maybe Karen has seen our stuff. 
pining for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Said, that's why. On the day I brought him home. That long ago? And you're only thinking to ask this now? Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. Clap that there iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone? You find what it is you're looking for. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Toggle. Sorry for making you wait so long. Oh. Let's get that thing off you. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. You miss Sid as much as the rest of us, don't you? You want me to go with you somewhere? Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. Go on now. Where to then, Toggle? Toggle, where are you taking me? I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. Do you have a better hint for me? Unless... You've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west. Toward Rosaria. Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in almost 20 years. To Port is older then. Fingers crossed the old mooring is still there. Still here. After all these years. A lot smaller than I remember. And you're a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. <laughs> I wasn't being serious.
This place hasn't changed at all. The rookery's right through those trees. Come on. Race you there? I bet I could still beat you. was our hideaway, wasn't it, Torgal? Coming here helped me to forget who I was, or wasn't. Prince, Shield, son his mother could love. Had I been any one of those things? Perhaps. <laughs> What is it, boy? This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did... you bring these here? My sparring sword. Stop looking for me, did you, boy? <laughs> Thank you, Toggle, for never giving up, for never forgetting. Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. <coughs> That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. People always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. And we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Toggle. Let's go home.
do I owe the honor? For saying Fornian, dear. No scratches, right? Not bad, if I do say so myself.